Hello and welcome. I'm going to talk today about ethical subjectivism. Many people are pragmatists, so when I submit that there's no objective morality, the response is that this is unworkable, so I need to find another system. It's akin to running out of petrol in the desert, and your travel partner responds similarly. There has to be petrol, otherwise we can't get to where we need to go. Hat tip to Captain Obvious, but unlike ethics and morality, one can't just conjure fuel. This is why we've created normative ethics, uh, the operative being normative. So how can anyone work with a system without objective morality? I get this reaction often when I broach the topic of ethical subjectivism. Ethical subjectivism, or moral subjectivism, is a philosophical theory that suggests moral truths are determined on an individual level. It holds that there are no objective moral properties and that ethical statements are illogical because they do not express immutable truths. For me, as a moral anti-realist, vacillating at times toward non-cognitive emotivism, if not outright moral nihilism, it's been relatively easy to hold the subjective meta-ethical position while simultaneously adopting a pragmatic ethical theory, though I have always found the prevailing frameworks to be lacking, whether consequentialism, deontology, or virtue ethics. In fact, this is why I decided to go deeper into philosophy to see what others had to say about the matter. Fortunately, David Hume had trodden this ground before in an inquiry concerning human understanding. Subjectivism allows one to have a preference for a given moral framework. It just simultaneously claims that one cannot objectively be judged as better. This is about where people's Hitler and rape fantasies are introduced into the argument, and always with an air of checkmate. So let's explore this. We'll take historical evil bad person Adolf Hitler and his ill-treatment of Jews in the years leading up to and through World War II. The reasoning usually follows these lines. Of course there's good and evil, right and wrong. Don't you agree that what he did was immoral? Sidestepping that personally, in my opinion, Hitler was not cool, it doesn't answer to the morality. In the subjectivist domain, there is no good and evil, but I tend to reserve that response as it falls on deaf ears. Instead, let's follow through and reflect on the speculative outcome represented by Philip K. Dick's The Man in the High Castle. In this world, the Nazis won the war and conquered the free world, but in the vein of history as written by the victors, society found a new equilibrium. That's what people do. Sure, there are always dissenters, as there are today in any government, but this evil moniker is applied by the glorious and victorious Allied forces over the axis of evil. Had the Nazis prevailed, it would have been but a footnote in history, if that. Morality is just perspective. From a societal perspective, it may take the form of ethnocentrism, but in the end, morality and ethics distill down to an individual vantage, even if the individual adopts a package off the rack, as most do, in the form of religions and community guidelines. Nietzsche's nihilism captured this in his subjective authenticity which is being true to oneself. In this view, it's irrelevant what moral systems others impose upon you. If you're resolved to go to the gym at least once a week, yet don't, you're not being authentic. Camus noted in his Myth of Sisyphus that one has the option upon realizing the absurd that there is no inherent meaning to life aside from suicide and acceptance one can adopt a worldview, whether religious or spiritual, to capitalism, socialism, his preference, or pastafarian, essentially denying the absurd. Well, ignorance is bliss. In a way, the religiously devout have it simpler. They are indoctrinated with a prepackaged belief system, and they don't really question it. But other people have political and jurisprudence systems, prêt porte and they are willing to defend them seemingly to the death. Some stated arguments against ethical subjectivism are as follows. Ethical relativism has implications such as moral infallibility and moral equivalence. It does not offer a way for parties engaged in ethical debate to resolve their disagreements because each side is required to acknowledge that the opinion of their opponent is equally as factual as their own. Individuals can never have a moral disagreement if both sides are morally ideal. As well, blame cannot be placed in a conflict if moral truths are always objective. Let's look at each of these in turn. No way for parties engaged in an ethical debate to resolve their disagreements? True. 
If you can't turn a screw with a sledgehammer, perhaps you need to question whether you're using the appropriate tool instead of cursing the sledgehammer for not being a screwdriver. If a tool isn't suitable for a task, perhaps you're using the wrong tool. One can't have a moral disagreement if both sides are morally ideal. True. Again, perhaps you need a different instrument. Blame cannot be placed in a conflict if moral truths are always objective. True. I'll sidestep the question of why blame is necessary, but yet again, this may not be the right instrument. On balance, people seem to need pragmatism, so they seek a workable moral framework. Assuaging cognitive dissonance is as natural as breathing. Ah, the joy of delusion. Humans fabricate moral systems in an attempt to address issues such as these, but all of these systems are in fact human constructs, and none are objectively better than another. Subjectively, one may prefer one over another. Don't blame me. I'm just the messenger.